Now we're turning to optimization problems. This is in some sense a culmination of what we've been doing so far when we were studying functions and their properties and how to find local or global maxima and minima. Because in practice, in many practical problems, we want to maximize a quantity or minimize a quantity under certain constraints. So it might be maximizing area, volume, profit, or minimizing distance, energy consumption, time, cost, these type of things. All of these problems have to be solved under certain constraints. And so this is what we're going to talk about in this section, how to solve these type of problems that come from uh, practical considerations. As for related rates problems, these are only, these are uh, most of the time word problems and so one of the steps will be to extract the information out of of the text and reformulate it in mathematical terms so that we can handle it. So let's start with a very simple example. You have 40 feet of fencing and you want to enclose with it a rectangular space for a garden. And we want to find the dimensions of the largest possible garden. Where largest possible here means of maximal area. So we are looking for the dimensions of a rectangle. So a rectangle looks like that. Because we want to find the dimensions, what we are looking for are the dimensions and therefore of course we need to give names to these dimensions. So I'm going to call the dimensions x and y. We want to find x and y that correspond to the largest area. So of course because I'm trying to maximize the area I'm going to introduce um, a notation for the area. Let's call the area capital A. And here I can relate this um, objective function, what I want to maximize, the area, with these dimensions I'm looking for, x and y. The area is just a product of the dimension. What else do I know? I know that I have only 40 feet of fencing. So what does that mean? That means I have 40 feet to go around my rectangle and to go around I need to go around twice in the direction x and twice in the, in the direction y. So 2x plus 2y has to be 40. So the quantity I want to maximize is usually going to be called the objective function. In some problems we want to minimize the obje objective function. And then I have a constraint in this case that the perimeter of the rectangle 2x plus 2y must be 40. This is a problem that doesn't really require calculus to be solved because you see that once you formulate the problem uh, in those terms, maximize A, which is a product of X and Y, under the constraint that 2X plus 2Y is 40, see that the problem is symmetric in X and Y. In other words, the problem doesn't change if I exchange the role of X and Y. That means that if the problem is symmetric in X and Y, so is the solution. In other words, the um, rectangle that maximizes the area is necessarily symmetric in X and Y. In other words, it is a square. So now, um, if it is a square of um, perimeter 40, it means that the side of the square is 10 and the maximal area is 100. So there is really no need for calculus to solve this. But because it's a simple situation, uh, we're going to solve it with calculus as well, um, simply to illustrate the steps to be followed. So, if we want to find the maximum for the area, what we've been doing is um, look at techniques to find maxima or minima of functions of one variable. Here we have a function of two variables. So we're going to use the constraint that 2x plus 2y is 40, in other words x plus y is 20, to solve for one of the variables and substitute in the objective function. In this case y is 20 minus x. So if I substitute for y 20 minus x in the expression for my objective a, then I get that the area is x multiplied by 20 minus x. So I obtain a 
as a function of one variable and x and y are dimensions of a rectangle so of course they are not negative that means that x and y are at least 0 and they can cannot be more than 20 right, because their sum is 20 so x and y are between 0 and 20 so now I have reformulated the problem as uh, the problem to find the maximum, absolute maximum, of the function a of x, which is 20x minus x squared, on the closed interval 0, 20. But a is polynomial, so this is a continuous function on a closed interval. I know how to find the maximum. I can use the closed interval method. Closed interval method means the absolute maximum is going to occur either at the endpoints or at a critical number that falls in the interval. To look for the critical number, I differentiate the function. I get 20 minus 2x. And the critical numbers are going to be the zeros of the derivative. In this case, the derivative is 0 exactly when x is 10, which is a point in the interval. At the end points, when one, if one of the dimension is 0 or 20, then uh, if one of the dimension is 0, the area is 0. If uh, dimension is 20, then the other one is 0, and therefore the area is 0. At 10, on the other end, the area is um, 10 by 10, so 100, and this is a maximal area. We obtain this maximal area when x is 10, in which case y is 20 minus 10, 10. So as expected, we get the largest garden for 10 by 10 square. Now let's turn to a second example where we're going to follow the same steps but this time we don't have a symmetry argument to avoid calculus altogether. A farmer with 750 feet of fencing wants to enclose a rectangular area and then divide it into four pens with fencing parallel to one side of the rectangle. And we want to know what is the largest possible area for the four pens. So we are enclosing again a rectangular area, something like that, and I can, to begin with, give the dimensions of this rectangle. And we are looking for, <coughs> we are dividing this uh, rectangle into four pens using fencing parallel to one of the sides. So I picked parallel to the side Y, but I could have picked the other direction. It doesn't matter whether these four pens are equal in width or not. We want to find the largest possible total area, so that means I want to maximize A, which is again the product XY of the outside dimensions of the rectangle, and this is what we want to maximize. The constraint is that I have only 750 feet of fencing. So how, can I, how do I use my fencing here? Well, I need to use fencing on every single piece of um, red segment and so this time, to use my fencing, I'm going to need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5y and 2x. So 5y plus 2x must be 750. So this time I don't have symmetry between x and y, and I shouldn't expect the, um, the solution, the optimal rectangle, um, to be symmetric. So how to deal with it? Again, we want to maximize a which is a function of two variables x and y. We would know what to do to find the maximum for a function of one variable. So we're going to transform it into a function of one variable using the constraint. So if in the constraint I solve for y, I get one-fifth of 750 minus 2x, and I can substitute this value of y in a. So a is xy, and I replace y by what I have found. So I get 1 fifth of 750x minus 2x squared. And now I want to maximize this function of one variable on the closed interval 0, 375. Y 0, 375. X has to be at least 0 because it's a dimension of the rectangle. It cannot be more than 375 because if I go 375 in the direction X and I have to come back, another 375, that, come, that adds up to 750, and I already have used, used up all of the fencing without going in the direction Y. 
So because we are using the closed interval method, I'm looking for critical values of the objective function a. To this end, I need to differentiate. In this case, when I differentiate, I get 750 over 5 minus 4 fifths of x. And 750 fifths is just 150. This is 0 exactly when x is 750 fourths, which is also 375 half. And now, because I'm using the closed interval method, I know that the maximum of the function a on the closed interval 0, 375 is going to be happening either at the endpoint, at one of the endpoints, or at a critical point that falls in the interval. Here we have just one critical value, so I evaluate the function at the endpoints. At the endpoints, I get 0, because I get one of the two dimensions to be 0. And at the critical value, I get um, 14,062.5 square feet and this is the maximal area this is exactly what I was looking for so we found the maximal area and we found what kind of di dimensions uh, we need to pick to, to obtain this maximal area we need x to be 375 over 2 feet and y to be 75 feet so all this takes us to some general guidelines on how you deal with optimization problems. First, because these problems are given as word problems, you need to understand the problem. Read the problem a couple of times, ask yourself what you're looking for, in other words, what is the objective function, what is, what is it that you want to maximize or minimize, what is given to you, in other words, what are the constraints. Draw a picture if relevant. As you have seen in the previous two examples, it was very important to draw a picture and introduce variables that we label on the picture. You need to introduce notations. In the previous examples, we were looking for um, the maximal area, so we introduced the notation for the area. We looked for the dimensions of rectangles, so we introduced notations for these dimensions. So assign a symbol to the quantity to be maximized or minimized, so to the objective function, in our previous case, the area. Assign symbols to other unknown quantities and label the pictures with those symbols. So uh, in the previous case, we had the dimensions x and y, and we uh, indeed use them on our picture. Then express the objective function and the constraint or constraints in terms of other variables. That means uh, this step corresponds to observing that what we want to maximize, the area A, was a product of the dimensions x and y, and that the constraint could also be expressed in terms of x and y. Then you want to use the constraints to eliminate all but one variable in the objective function. What we've been studying so far are functions of one variable. Very often in these problems the objective is first seen as a function of more than one variable. So use a constraint to eliminate all but one variable. This is what we've been doing in the uh, previous two examples. We had the area as a function of x and y. We solve for y in the constraint, substitute in the area to obtain a as a function of x alone. And once this is done you can use the method the methods of the previous modules to find the absolute minimum or maximum of the objective function respecting the constraints that we have. So these are general guidelines and in the next video we are going to apply them to more examples.